Hi, I'm Chrissy Miles, and you're watching The Chrissy Miles Show, where I teach you how to take eternal truth and produce extreme results. In today's episode, we're talking about why the Word of God is spiritually discerned. Hey, welcome back to the Chrissy Miles Show. Before we get started, subscribe to this channel and click the bell to get notified of more of my proven methods to get more out of life. Let's begin. Hey everybody, in this month's series, I wanna talk to you about the importance of hearing the voice of God. And as we get started to look into the new year and establish our goals for the year and look ahead at what we might want to try to accomplish, if you're a believer, chances are you're trying to hear the voice of God in order to develop some direction for your life or determine exactly what you should be working on. Well, what I want to talk to you about today is so crucially important to hearing the voice of God. In fact, I believe that so many Christians miss this and they miss the voice of God in their life because they don't know how to spiritually discern the word. So we're going to be looking at a passage here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And what Paul is writing about is he's trying to instruct the church at Corinth and to why it is important for them to have the Spirit of God in order for them to really understand what has freely been given to them. And of course, if you know anything about the church in Corinth, this is the famous church where there was um, a lot of abuses of spiritual gifts and a lot of confusion about what spiritual gifts was really all about. And so Paul is actually, in this context of this letter, is helping them to see that, you know, the Spirit is not bad. In fact, God gives us the Spirit specifically so that we can discern all of the free things, the good things that God has given to us. And in verse 13, he says, this is what we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. And he says, the man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. You know, I was just having a conversation with a friend of mine and I was talking about how, you know, personally for me, um, it is so hard to listen to pastors and, and other preachers who do not have a revelation of this passage of scripture because most of the time what the Bible turns out to be is just kind of this series of positive, um, you know, messages, kind of pull yourself up by your bootstrap, isn't Jesus a nice person kind of message, but it's missing the power of God that comes from a revelation of the Spirit. And I believe that one of the greatest indications of someone's receiving or having received the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, is happening right here with what Paul is teaching in this passage is that all of a sudden the Word of God takes on a whole new meaning. It is actually spiritually discerned, which means that the revelation that you get about not just the stories in the Bible, but specifically about the good things that were given to us from Jesus, you can read about that in that previous verse, verse 12, that is what is a clear indication to me when someone actually has received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, is they are able to freely understand or more easily get and grasp the good things that God has given to us through Jesus Christ. And so Paul is telling them here, listen, if you want to hear the voice of God, then you have to receive what the Spirit is offering, which is basically a mind that is tuned into the things of God. And he goes on to talk about how no one can really understand what a person is thinking, except for if you were to have the mind of Christ. And having the mind of Christ, it doesn't mean that you, you know, you think things that are perfect or that you never have a fault in your thinking. Having the mind of Christ in, in context, especially to this passage of scripture, means that you have the ability to be able to read the word of God and discern it in the same manner that Jesus would discern the word of God. And we've talked so much about this on this channel specifically is that one of the, the main things that Christ came to do is he came to break down the religious stereotypes that people had of God in a world where, you know, among some of the Jewish uh, philosophers and religious leaders that God was a distant God that you had to appease with a certain number of proper sacrifices. That was really just a an adaptation of what the Jews had basically uh, come to understand in their infiltration into these pagan nations or, or how the pagan nations had infiltrated them. So for so long throughout their history, God admonished them to, to be set apart, to be holy because he was holy. And yet so many times through either intermarriage or through being conquered 
conquered by other nations. They were they were taken over not only in their their physical presence or their their land or or their country, but they were also taken over in their mindset, and they were led to believe that God was a different kind of God than really the God that they had worshipped as far as their ancestors were concerned. Now, of course, the Pharisees got really angry with Jesus about this, and they said, "Listen, you're telling us that we don't know who our father Abraham is," and and Jesus basically said to them very you know, straightforwardly, listen, you, you worship the God of your fathers, Abraham, but he says, I'm here to tell you that before Abraham was even born, I am. Now this was extremely offensive to the religious leaders because Jesus was a picture of, of something very different than the God they served. And yet here they were proclaiming to the people that they had this, you know, specific inroad to God, or they had a, almost like this direct line to God because they knew the Holy Scriptures. And yet everything that they espouse and everything that they supported and everything that they said that God was about, Jesus said, actually, you're getting it all wrong. So when Paul is writing to the church in Corinth here in 1 Corinthians, and he's saying, listen, there is a reality about the nature of God that can only be understood by the Spirit. This is a key differentiating factor between Christians who are, let's say, you know, they just received Jesus and that's all there was. That's all there knew there was. And Christians who not only have received Jesus, but have received that revelation of the spirit, that baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, being baptized into something, people get this confused a lot. And on oftentimes we, we only maybe hear about one baptism, but that word baptism in the original language, it really doesn't have the same translation in English as it does in the original language. In the original language, it's much more robust. And so it is a transliteration of the word. It comes from the Greek word baptizo or baptismo. And it has three specific indications or three specific meanings all wrapped into one. The first meaning is that it's like taking something and immersing it into something else, which I believe is what happens when the Holy Spirit takes us and baptizes us into Christ. Baptism also is, you know, the same kind of picture that you would get if a, a sponge was soaked in water. And what that sponge does is it literally, it, it, it brings in and it soaks up that which it has been, you know, placed into. And then finally, when you pull that sponge out of this bucket of water, for example, and you were to squeeze it, it's it's oozing out. Water is just coming out of the pores everywhere. That is really the revelation of what it means to be baptized. So when you say that you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's not about the manifestations of the things that happen to you when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's more about the experience that you have where you experience being filled up to the fullness of God in every Every way so that the things of God, the mind of Christ, it fills your whole body up, you're immersed into it, and then it begins to come out of you in first of all, foremost, by the motivation of love is what Paul talks about in this whole book, but also in the miraculous signs and wonders. But if you want to know and understand the voice of God, if you want to be able to hear the voice of God, Paul specifically tells us that the things of God are can only be spiritually discerned. This is another big reason why um, I personally have a hard time trusting those people who have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they might be great Christian people that are very moral, upright, upstanding, um, you know, kind of righteous, holy people. But I want to surround myself with people who aren't just moral and upright and and holy, but I want to understand who God is and his nature and his character. And Paul tells us in verse 12 here that the whole reason why we are given the Holy Spirit and why we need a spiritual revelation of the word is so that we can understand what God has freely given us. That is such a crucial, crucial aspect to hearing the voice of God. You know, so many people say that they they hear God on certain things, but their actions and their activities that follow are more uh, as a result of maybe um, limiting themselves or, or holding back on the things that they want to do or getting this picture that maybe God is asking them to um, to reduce or, or to be limited in some way. I just always feel like I run into people that have this mindset of God that God doesn't want them to, you know, prosper. He doesn't want them, you know, to have, you know, great relationships. I mean, he just is okay with the status quo. And that's not really the God that we serve. So being able to freely 
understand and discern what God has given us through Jesus Christ, it takes a revelation of the Spirit. And he said specifically, he says, listen, we're speaking words that are not uh, taught really by the world, right? These are the things that people of the world do not really understand. He says, the man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit. They are foolishness to him. Perhaps you've been in situations here in the not so uh, distant past where you've had a hard time like expressing the things of God and you don't understand why people won't receive it. Well, there's a reason why people won't receive what you're trying to tell them is they don't have the spirit. And so you're trying to share with them spiritual things, but all the stuff that you're saying to them is just foolishness. And so it's very important, especially in this day and age, when you're trying to be a witness for Jesus, let's say in social media or in this world, you have to have some serious conversations with people about where they stand in relationship with Jesus, if they have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And I see so many people, so many Christians try to argue spiritual points with people on social media platforms, and these people have no concept of Jesus Christ at all. They've not made Jesus their Lord and Savior. They've not proclaimed that they follow God. God as their God, or they they don't listen to or adhere to the Bible as their ultimate source of truth. And yet you have Christians that are trying to like pressure people into believing what the Bible says. Well, why would you try to pressure someone into believing what the Bible says when they don't even have a relationship with Jesus? Like that is the starting point. So if you want to see your evangelistic efforts improve in the social media realm, or with people that you're really trying to, you know, convince of a particular truth, they have to have not only a baptism of the Holy Spirit, but they have to have a relationship with Jesus first of all. So you would start there by even asking them if they have made Jesus the Lord of their life. That is the very first step in this whole entire process of being able to hear what God is saying. So often Christians want to get their point across to people who have no inkling or no indication of anything related to God. And yet, and then they become offended, not understanding why people don't listen. Well, people aren't listening because they actually haven't received Jesus. Jesus as their Savior and Lord. And second of all, if they have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then they do not understand the things of the Word. They do not understand the things that have been freely given to us by God through Jesus. And therefore, everything that you're saying to them is total foolishness. Have you experienced this before? I know I have. And so when you're you're talking about particular issues that you're, you're maybe trying to convince people or persuade people of that are biblical issues, do not expect someone without a relationship with Jesus Christ to be able to even have a discussion with you about those things because everything you're telling them is total foolishness. They cannot understand it because all of these things are spiritually discerned. You can have the greatest argument in the world for the things that you believe or the reason why you believe them. But if what you're trying to share never makes its way past the logos of the mind, meaning the pure logic of what you can conceptualize in your own reasoning faculties, if the word of God never penetrates that and gets down into the heart of a particular matter, you're never going to see the fruit or the byproduct of what you're trying to maybe persuade people about because all they're doing is they're thinking about God from a purely Gnostic, um, you know, uh, man's rationale, human reasoning standpoint, and they cannot therefore then perceive the things of God because all of the issues related to Christ and and all the issues related to the kingdom of God, of course, are based upon faith. And we know the Bible teaches us in Hebrews that faith is basically the evidence of everything that is not seen. And so if you really want to start, first of all, hearing the voice of God better yourself personally, then you must consider whether or not you have been fully baptized in the Holy Spirit, which means that you've been immersed and filled up to the point of overflowing, which is the true definition of the word baptism. And then from that point on, as you begin to share the truth about what God has freely given you through Jesus Christ, you will now relate to people no longer from a worldly point of view is what Paul goes on to say. He says, we no longer relate to people from a worldly point of view, but we're seeing them now from a different perspective. And that perspective is first and foremost, the person that you're trying to witness to or the person that you're trying to win over doesn't even have a relationship with Jesus. 
you have to start by ministering to them about what it means to make Jesus their Lord and Savior. Now, again, that's a monumental task. I understand that. And, and people can't come unless God is calling them, unless he's drawing them. And so you have to be mindful of these things as well. You know, you might be spending a lot of effort trying to minister to someone about the reality of Jesus Christ as Savior of the world, but God's not really drawing them and you're running into brick walls all the time. Now, I'm not saying that you throw those relationships away necessarily, but I definitely think you have to reprioritize um, who you're spending time with. And uh, sometimes you plant the seed, sometimes someone else waters it, but we know that God makes it grow. There's a timing to all of these things. There is a priority to some of these things and specifically you must start with giving people an opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior and establish that first and then you have to know how to minister to people the baptism of the Holy Spirit because the Word of God is spiritually discerned. If you do not know how to do that or if you've not done that yourself you're going to not see the kind of fruit of your evangelistic efforts as maybe Maybe you could see as some of maybe the early disciples when they ministered to people and at the drop of a hat, people received what they were saying. They repented of their sin. They received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And they went on a mission to actually share that truth and that reality with others. So hearing the voice of God is a crucial, crucial uh, foundational principle to living the kind of life that Jesus' disciples would be expected to live. But if you do not have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and you have not explored what that is, you will have a hard time hearing and discerning the voice of God. It won't make sense to you. And so I just want to, you know, really pray with you and and believe with you that if this is something that you've been asking God about, that he brings clarity to you. Obviously, the word of God is full of examples of people who have related to God from that spiritual dimension, that spiritual perspective. It's hard to perceive because it comes by faith and I understand things that are that are by faith are difficult to perceive with our human reasoning but I believe that if you have an intention in your heart to get to know God and to get more out of life as I like to call it on this channel he is going to guide you into all of these truths so that you may freely understand or or understand what he has freely given you in Christ Jesus that's the whole purpose that's the whole point is that God wants wants you to really grasp and really understand what he's given you in Christ Jesus. And therefore that comes by a revelation of the spirit that doesn't happen with the logical mind per se, but it comes when the spirit of God is really filled up to the fullness in our lives. And it begins to overflow into our minds from the spiritual dimension, bringing clarity to the things that we think and believe so that we can experience the best that this life has to offer. Well, I hope you enjoyed this today. We're doing a whole series on hearing the voice of God uh, in this month. And so, hey, if you haven't had a chance to do this yet, I want you to download my top eight ways to get more out of life. There are eight specific tips that God showed me that when I began to apply these things to my life, my life radically changed in a very short period of time. And this is not about, you know, all the stuff that I quote unquote did, although I did do some things, but it started on some of these basic principles like I'm teaching you here today, hearing the voice of God, applying it to your life. So download that today. The link is in the description, the top eight ways to get more out of life. I hope you join me again each Tuesday where I teach you how to get more out of life. Thanks for watching.